Baltimore Chesapeake Bay Outward Bound School is an experiential education opportunity mostly for kids and for a lot of urban kids. We have an urban campus in Lincoln Park in West Baltimore and uh, some of our courses take place there. And then we also use the vast beauty of uh, the surrounding areas. So the Potomac, the Appalachian Trail, Chesapeake Bay, we have courses on all those areas. The Outward Bound story is a remarkable story, and it really came out of the tough, agonizing battle that the British were in in World War II. You remember that so many ships were being sunk trying to get supplies to this island fortress called the United Kingdom. And they were losing hundreds and thousands of sailors. And they noticed that the old sailors were surviving and the young sailors were dying. They asked Kurt Hahn to figure that out. What's going on there? Essentially, it came down to grit and resilience. The old guys had been there, done that. They felt OK. They knew that they could you know, persist through and survive, and they did. The young guys gave up and died. And Hahn's idea was, if you train people to be of service, you provide them with the skills and the attitudes of wanting to help, then they won't sit back and be bystanders. They realize that we are all crew and wherever we are, and we need to work together. At Outward Bound, we think about all the time, survival, making it through, preparing. I think that retirement is much like that. We need to be putting in the work so that our retirement plan is really a survival plan. When we come to the end of our career, we can make sure that we've got funding for all of the basic needs and you know live out the rest of our lives in dignity. I think the dirty little secret about many companies and particularly nonprofits is is that they have emphasized the mission, they've emphasized the generosity of their employees and they have not adequately provided for a dignified retirement. Nonprofits are notorious for very thin, very anemic benefits packages. Everything from salary to insurance to retirement plans, you just don't expect a lot. I think a lot of non nonprofit employees go into it because it's where their heart is, because they want to make a change in the world and they're willing to take less because of it. Um, but it's nice to see that there are movements happening around the U.S. where the expectation is changing. Outward Bound has a magnificent contributor. And he said to us, I'm delighted to be a contributor to Outward Bound, but I want to understand what you're doing for your employees, specifically what you're doing for their retirement. And we looked at it, and we were very proud that we had a match. We had about a 3% match. And uh, he said, that's not enough. We essentially got a letter back that said, I'm not giving unless you take better care of your employees. And so we received that message loud and clear as a put up or shut up. You know? um, I think our board also received it, the, the message and it was a really interesting conversation. He, he prodded a conversation to happen and we answered the challenge and made a commitment to get our employees to a 6% of salary match. We talked about it in the board and did the math and found it would not be that much more of a drain on the budget if we went ahead and, and made that additional and passed a board resolution to do that. As a board, I think Baltimore Chesapeake Bay Outward Bound felt an obligation to uh, not only to the, to the kids we serve and the people we serve, but also to our staff, the instructors and the people that, that present these programs, that they work for Outward Bound. And so we were thinking about what we could do to, to take care of them. So they take care of others. I think it's our, it's the board's responsibility to take care of the staff. And a very obvious way to do that is to try and encourage and develop and offer and promote and require, uh, you know, participation in a, in a retirement plan. While we were developing the improvements for the Outward Bound Plan, the New York Times ran an article on a really good plan right here in Baltimore. It happened to be at the Gilman School. A lot of our supporters at Outward Bound are also Gilman supporters, and many of them are Gilman alums. We call Sean Furlong, who's the driving force at Gilman behind the improvements in their retirement plan, and asked him to teach us the best practices that he had learned, such as automatic enrollment and automatic escalation of contributions, 
We tried to incorporate as many of these best practices as we could in the Outward Bound Retirement Plan. First and foremost, a mandatory contribution. When somebody comes to work for a nonprofit, they're generally not getting paid as much as they could make in the private world. So you have to make it mandatory, otherwise they're just going to find other places to spend that money. Second of all, you have to provide some kind of matching program. I think that's very important. It doesn't have to be like the world's greatest matching program, but something that gives them some incentive and shows that you're also in this with them. Third, you have to provide some type of education. Uh, that should be retirement planning. Um, we are expanding retirement planning to overall financial wellness, debt, college planning, long-term health issues. Um, and then fourth, you have to form a retirement plan committee. Um, that retirement plan committee will have oversight in terms of the investment choices that are provided, um, the fees that are being charged, and keeping up with the different types of regulations that are out there, and the different lawsuits, of course, that are coming. We have reduced our number of options that our employees can invest in from about 200 down to 20. Um, most of those are target date funds. And so what we're trying to help our employees do is not have to worry about thinking about the retirement, but the retirement plan committee is responsible for making sure that our fees are competitive and that we can ideally uh, avoid a lawsuit, but also make sure that the employees are getting the best bang for their buck. Really clever ways to encourage proper and, and full uh, retirement planning and, and savings are, are to, to put it on auto drive and get people to sign up and sign up at a rate it's not just participating, but it's at a high rate so that they have that money working for them their whole lives. And that's the key to building a retirement nest egg. It's not just that you're in, but it's just you're in a lot. Our country does have a retirement crisis right now. You know, under 35-year-olds are minus 2% in their savings rates. Under 45 is 6%. And if you start saving at 45, you need to put away 27% of your funds uh, every year to be able to retire at, at the time you want to. 27% is a really tough number. So we're really trying to push the idea of early saving as much as possible. Every year we present our employees, find another 50 cents a month, find another dollar a month. It actually adds up and it compounds. And, and they start to understand, if I can put another half percent away, another one percent away every year, it will really uh, make a difference in my future retirement. Once that match is there, it's the carrot that I think a lot of people need to say, okay, I'm going to plug this money away because I know that I'm going to be incentivized for doing it. It definitely drives behavior and the behavior we want to see. You set aside a dollar and somebody gives you another dollar, you're, you're in on that. Um, so. I think those incentives to increase participation in the amount of savings is really important. And, and that's, you know, that's one of those, uh, that's a hallmark, I think, of a, of a good employer and a thoughtful employer. And, and when we're in the nonprofit sector, when we're wearing our nonprofit board hats and volunteer hats, we got to be thinking about that. Boy, you can imagine, our employees love it. They love it. I actually had an employee come into my office the other day and she had been checking her account. She was like, do you know how much money I've managed to save? And she was so excited about it. And it's, that's nice to hear, you know. I don't think that would have happened without this. I appreciate knowing that um, although, right, I'm working at a nonprofit, I'm not making much necessarily as much as um, some people my age are, some of my friends are, uh, knowing that I can still be saving and um, in a way that's sustainable is really comforting for me. People are just openly thankful in a way you don't normally see people come up to you and say thank you so much for this. It, it, it's bursting through their enthusiasm and it, you know it means there's a latent unhappiness under the surface that, that you're starting to fix. You know, an, an ROI on, on this kind of investment, uh, you know, pretty long dated, but it, it's a big number I think if it does what? If it reduces turnover, if it attracts and retains key employees, um, if, it, if it allows people to feel very comfortable to be all in and to stay really focused on their job because they know that their employer, their nonprofit, the nonprofit's board is watching out for them, has their back. You know, I mean, I, who doesn't want to work for an organization that seems like they care about you? This is really about 
do we care about our employees and, and do we really want them to be happy and, and think about their future and um, the culture of togetherness and, and helping these guys get to the place that we, we want them to get to. So we do feel that a lot of people understand that they, this is a terrific benefit and, uh, and frankly it's going to increase the likelihood that they're going to stay at Gilman longer because it's a great retirement plan, we care about them, and uh, it's a great place to work. You know, most nonprofits are, are generally great places to work with a great mission. So if you can help them in terms of being happy in their job and the mission of the school, um, or in Outward Bounds case, uh, the program, if you can give them some type of benefit that helps them get to a great retirement, and if you can show that you really care about them, I think our employees are generally gonna be happy and wanna stay, stay with the school. We got to help everybody realize how important it is for nonprofits to be good in this area because historically they haven't been, and the the employees that a nonprofit attracts generally aren't thinking about their own financial well-being because they're working for a nonprofit. They're clearly not driven by money, you know, and how much money they make, and and yet these people uh, do such wonderful things. We got to take care of them. So it's a you know I think all of us have a responsibility there to sort of be better in in the helping employees plan for their retirement. Every nonprofit in the country faces the same dilemma, and the donors to every nonprofit in the country have the same power that our donor has to incite change. We challenge the donors out there, and we challenge the boards out there to make a difference. We'd like to start a movement that makes a difference. Join us.